Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Today we'll be solving this question, the integral of sec inverse root x and we'll be solving it first by substitution and then by parts. So let's begin. So first of all, we're going to keep x as t square. 2t dt by dx becomes 1 because differentiation of x with respect to itself is 1. Differentiation of t square would be 2t dt by dx. Now dt sorry dx becomes 2t dt because I've just taken dx to that side. This is what we're going to substitute. So we have the integral of sec inverse t because x is t square so the root of t square would be t into 2t dt. Now I can take 2 outside because it's a constant so we have the integral of t sec inverse t. Now, we're going to use the bypass formula for which we're going to use the Lie 8 rule. Bypass formula is u into the integration of v dx minus the integration of differentiation of u into the integration of v dx. u and v are two terms of the integral. The Lie 8 rule helps us to decide which term we should place as u and which term we should place as v based on which term is easier to integrate and which term is easier to differentiate. Here are two terms are the algebraic term that is t and the sec inverse is the inverse trig trigonometric term. Now because inverse trigonometric comes before algebraic in the Lie 8 rule, inverse trigonometric will be placed as the u term. So the Lie 8 rule basically helps us to decide which term we should keep, keep as u. It's like an order of preference. So because inverse trigonometric comes before algebraic, inverse trigonometric is kept as the u term in the two terms of the integral. So our two terms sec inverse and t which is an algebraic term. So I will keep algebraic term as the v term and the inverse trigonometric term as the u term. Alright, now we are going to start using the formula. So we have sec inverse t into the integration of t dt minus the integration of differentiation of sec inverse which is 1 upon t root t square minus 1. There is a mod sign here, but it's okay. We are going to ignore that for now. So, into the integral of t dt. Now, the integral of t dt is t square by 2. So, we have t square by 2 sec inverse t minus the integral of 1 upon t root t square minus 1 into t square by 2 dt. Now, one of the t gets cancelled. And I'm going to place 1 by 2 outside because it's a constant. So we have t upon root t square minus 1 dt. Now we're going to substitute t square minus 1 as g. So dg by dt becomes 2t because the differentiation of 1 would be 0 anyway. It's a constant. So dg upon 2t is dt. So this becomes t square by 2 sec inverse t minus, so we would have 1 by 2 outside now. Right here I'll show you. We have root g into dg upon 2t. t gets cancelled and now we can take another 1 more 1 by 2 outside. So t square by 2 sec inverse, sorry, minus 1 by 4 integral of dg upon g raised to half. Now, integral of dg upon g raised to half is basically g raised to minus half dg. And we know that when we have integral of g dg, g raised to n dg, the answer becomes g raised to n plus 1 upon n plus 1. So, for this integral, we would have g raised to minus half plus 1 upon minus half plus 1. So, this is g raised to half upon half which is 2 root g. So let's place this here. We have 2 t square by 2 sec inverse minus 1 by 4 into 2 root g plus c. Now we're going to start substituting. So we have t square by 2 sec inverse t minus 1 by 2 root t square minus 1 plus c. And our t square was x and so we, this becomes x by 2 sec inverse root x minus half root x minus 1 plus c. 
but we also have to remember that here we had taken a 2 outside. I have not written that in these steps. You should write that actually. So, we are going to multiply the final answer by 2 as well. Whole thing multiplied by 2. I can remove the plus C from the bracket because it's a constant anyway. So, it doesn't matter which constant I multiply it again with. So, this becomes x sec inverse root x minus root x minus 1 plus C. And that's the final answer. So that's it for today guys. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in the next video. Bye.